What's up, people? It's DevSage here, and this is the first video of my JavaScript data structure series. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of neat to go over some different data structures like arrays, linked lists, stacks, trees, graphs. Uh, and this is the first video in that series. And in this video, we'll be going over arrays. So what is an array? Well, an array is a simple container in memory that allows us to group related elements or items together. You can imagine it as this linear collection of items. Here are some common array operations. There's index of, which returns the index of whatever element you pass in it. There's push, which adds elements to the end of the array. There's pop, which removes elements from the end of the array. There's unshift, which adds elements to the beginning of the array. There's shift, which removes elements from the beginning of the array. There's find, which returns the first element that satisfies the callback that you give it. There's slice, which returns a new array that is a portion or a slice of the old array. Slice can take in a start index of where you want to start slicing this array from, and it takes in an ending index exclusive. So in this case, uh, this slice is taking all the elements from index two all the way up until but not including index five. Slice also allows you to just pass in the starting index, and this will take all of the elements from index two all the way until the end of the array. We also have an, a method called splice, which either adds or removes elements from an array. Um, slice or splice takes in a starting index, a delete count or how, however many elements you want to remove. And for the third argument, it takes in whatever elements you might want to add. So in this case, let's say we wanted to add a new element at index two of our array. So we would do something like this. We would say splice, pass in two as our starting index, zero for the number of elements we want to remove because we're only adding. And then we, for the third parameter, we pass in whatever elements we want to add. So in this case, we just add new. So on the other hand, let's say we wanted to remove the element at the second index. So that will look like this we would pass in two as our starting index. And for the number of elements we want to remove, we pass in one. And then we just leave our third parameter blank. So that's just a few of the most common array operations. Let's go ahead and jump into the code. Arrays can be defined in two different ways. One way we can define an array is with the array constructor. So let's say um, const array one equals new array. And in the parentheses, let's pass in a few values. So this is one way of defining an array. This array has three elements, one, four, and two. The second way to define an array, which is probably the way that you're more familiar with, is by using the array literal syntax. So let's say uh, const r2 equals uh, a pair of brackets, and let's put one, four, and two in there. So this is the second way um, to define an array. Uh, these two methods are doing the same thing. They're defining an array with three elements, one, four, and two. Uh, 
but you probably most most of the time you're going to want to use this array literal syntax um, it's it's more readable it's simpler and it's actually faster than creating a new instance of an array like this so so what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to comment this out and from now on we're going to reference the array literal syntax whenever we're we're dealing with arrays so let's rename this let's just say this is nums so now let's go over some of those methods that we just went over all right so let's go over push so if we wanted to push a new element to this array to the end of this array we can say nums dot push let's push uh, 89 and so now let's console log nums so what happens when we run this so let's run this code so now we have 1 4 2 and 89 89 got pushed to the end of the list so let's try pop so let's say nums dot pop and it doesn't take in any arguments, but it does remove the last element from the array. So let's run this again. So now we have nums where 89 was pushed, and now we have nums where 89 was popped off. What is, um, what's interesting about pop, um, pop actually returns a value it returns the value that you just popped so if I I could store the value of this pop call in a variable const popped and if I were to console log popped let's get rid of this I should get 89 because pop returns the value you just popped off okay so now let's uh, let's try shift so let's say nums dot shift this should remove the first element from the array so in this case it should remove one so let's uh, let's console log nums and now we have four and two. All right, so let's try unshift, which adds an element to the beginning. So let's try nums.unshift. And let's say we wanted to add 100 to the beginning of our array. And let's console log nums. Now we have 100, four, and two. All right, so now let's go over find. So let's comment this out. And remember, find basically returns the first element in the array that satisfies the callback function that we pass into find. So let's say we want it to, so let's, let's actually just print. Um, nums for now so one four and two let's say we wanted to find the first even value in this array so we want to find four so let's write a find um, let's store this in a variable const first even equals nums dot find which takes in a callback function this callback function has to return true or false. Um, what it does, it actually also takes in a single parameter here. In this case, we'll call it in. And what it does, it iterates over every element in nums and it runs this callback function on it. So in this case, we're going to write a conditional if in mod two equals zero return true so this is our condition if in mod two is equal to zero basically 
if n is even, then we return true. If this is not the case, it'll just iterate to the next element in the array, and that will be our n for that call. If it also returns false for that, it'll move to the next element, and that will be stored in n, and it will run that check on that element. So let's uh, let's console log what this value is. So look at that. This is the our first even four. It iterated over every number in this array, assigning each element to n at some point. And the f once our n satisfied this condition, once it returned true, it said, okay, this is the first element. Let's return that element, which it got four. Okay, so let's comment this out. So now let's try um, slice. Remember, slice basically returns a new array that is a portion or a slice of the original array. Slice takes in the starting index and the ending index that you want to slice to and from. So let's assign um, a new variable const uh, sliced array equals nums dot slice and let's say we want it to slice from index one to the end so we'll just pass in one our starting index and now let's console log sliced array so look at that we have four and two which is just a slice of our original array, 142. Now, it's, it's, it's important to note that this returns slice returns a new array, and it doesn't modify the current array in place. So if you were to do something like this, if you were to just have nums.slice, this wouldn't actually do anything. You would be kind of confused because you might console log nums, and you would say, oh, I have all of my elements here. Why is slice not working? Well, slice returns a new array, so you have to assign this to a new variable. All right, so now let's go over um, splice. Splice is a little bit different. It sounds the same as slice, but what splice does, it adds or removes an element starting at some index. So let's create a new array, actually. Let's, let's say const uh, fruits equals and let's have an array of strings which have fruits in them so banana orange apple and mango oops all right so let's say we wanted to add a fruit let's say we wanted to add lemon to index three so let's insert lemon using splice. So let's say fruits. And something to note, splice actually modifies the original array in place. So you can do something like fruits.splice without having to assign it into a variable. Um, splice modifies the original array. Slice does not. So going back, we want to insert um, an element at index three. So the first element splice takes in is the insertion index. So let's say three. So that should be um, zero, one, two, three. It should be in between apple and mango is what we're inserting. Um, the second argument to splice is how many elements we want to remove, which is zero since we want to insert. And then the third argument is the element we actually want to insert. So let's say lemon. So let's console log fruits. So look at that, we have banana, orange, apple, lemon, which got inserted at index three and mango. So, okay, cool. What else can we do with splice? Well, we can actually replace elements with splice as well. So let's say instead of lemon, we want it to replace lemon with I don't know, pair. So this is how 
our fruits array looks now. So if we wanted to replace lemon, we would need to say fruits dot splice index three is where we want to start. We want to remove one element from index three, which is lemon. And then we want to replace that with pear. So now if we console log fruits, pear should be in the place that lemon was. And as you can see, that is the case. All right, cool. So let's just, let's say we just wanted to, let's say we wanted to remove a few elements from our fruits array. So using this as a reference, let's say we wanted to remove orange and apple. So how would we do that? Well, we would say fruits.splice orange starts at index one so orange so one we want to remove orange and apple so we need to remove two elements and we don't need to pass in anything for our third parameter console log fruits boom banana pear mango cool all right, so that's a little bit about splice. So let's go over, let's comment this out and let's go over index of. So index of takes in some value for that array and it returns the index that that value is stored at. So in this case, if I wanted to find the index of apple, I would say const index of apple equals fruits dot index of and pass in apple and I want to console log index of apple so if I run this I should get two right because apple sits at the second index here now what happens if I pass in a value that's not in the array let's say I passed in pair pair is not in this array what happens is index of returns negative one if the value that you're trying to find does not exist in the array. And that is a little bit about arrays in JavaScript. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you wanna stay updated with my content. Be on the lookout for the next video in this series coming out next week. It's gonna be linked list, so be sure to tune in for that. Uh, if you want this shirt, this is my JavaScript retro logo shirt here. If you want this shirt, the merch link is down in the description. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty clean, right? I like it. Uh, but anyway, my merch link is down in the description, so check that out. But other than that, peace.